It always seemed like Sam Ellinger was going to be a Texas Longhorn. From a famous baby picture of him throwing the horns up to beating Shane Bouchelle out for the starting quarterback role, it all seems like everything has been building to his senior year. Will Sam Ellinger bring Texas back to the national championship? Who even is Sam Ellinger? In the Who Is series, we go through the backstories of up-and-coming collegiate and professional athletes. We release new content every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you like this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Sam Ellinger was born on September 30th, 1998 and grew up in the Austin, Texas area. From the time he was a kid, Ellinger was going to be a Longhorn. When he was three years old, he picked up a rock and walked over to his mother's car. He used the rock to scratch a Longhorn's logo and football into the paint. The University of Texas was not just a dream school for him, it was a part of him. He has said in interviews that when people talk badly about the university, it hurts him because he loves it so much. When his family moved to Westlake, it seemed like Ellinger was going to have some big shoes to fill at the quarterback position for the high school team. Drew Brees and Nick Foles, both of whom have won Super Bowls, played quarterback at Westlake. When Ellinger got to Westlake High School, he played for legendary coach Todd Dodge, who also had previously played quarterback for the Longhorns. Ellinger won the starting quarterback job his sophomore year. During that season, he accounted for almost 3,000 yards in total and 35 touchdowns. Texas started to take notice but did not offer Ellinger just yet. Instead, Ellinger was invited to, at the time, Texas offensive coordinator Sean Watson's elite quarterback academy. Watson said the person who won MVP was most likely going to get an offer from Texas. Ellinger knew this was his chance and worked extremely hard leading up to the camp. Ellinger won the camp and Watson offered him the next day. A month later, Sam Ellinger committed to his hometown Longhorns and never swayed from them. During his junior year, Ellinger threw for 4,041 passing yards and 50 touchdowns, while also rushing for 1,325 yards and 20 touchdowns. Ellinger also had one receiving touchdown. Ellinger led Westlake to the 2015 Class 6A Division I State Championship, where they lost 21-14 in overtime. Ellinger became the first junior to be named to the AP Sports Editor's Texas Player of the Year in 2015 and AP Texas Offensive Player of the Year. He also was named District 14 6A MVP, Second Team All-USA Honors as the All-Central Texas Player of the Year, Offensive Player of the Year, and, and First Team All-States by Texas Sports Writers. Before his senior year, Ellinger was named to the Elite 11 at the Nike Open. Going into Ellinger's senior year, he was named preseason All-State Quarterback of the Year by Dave Campbell's Texas Football and expectations were extremely high for Westlake and their senior leader. Unfortunately, Ellinger battled injuries throughout his senior year. In the season opener against 2015 Class 6A Division II state champions, Katie, Ellinger threw for 356 yards and rushed for 63 yards in a 32-29 win. Ellinger got hurt and missed the next four games before returning against crosstown rivals Lake Travis. Again, Ellinger suffered another injury and did not return until the start of the playoffs. Ellinger played in the first half of the playoff game where he threw for 203 passing yards and two touchdowns but got injured once again. Ellinger left the game with a broken wrist at halftime with Westlake up 38-0 and would not return. The following week, he informed his team his season was over due to the wrist injury. The other two injuries he suffered that season included a torn meniscus in the right knee and a broken thumb. Ellinger finished his high school career with a school record 9,886 total yards, which included 7,491 yards through the air and 2,396 yards on the ground. He also had 89 passing touchdowns and 35 rushing touchdowns. As a starter, Ellinger finished his career with a record of 23-6. and six. Ellinger committed to Texas on July 28, 2015, but also had offers from Florida State, Houston, and SMU. He was a four-star recruit rated as the number four dual-threat quarterback in the class, 19th best player in Texas, and 119th best player nationally. When Ellinger first got to Texas, he was behind true sophomore Shane Bouchelle. Check out my video on who is Shane Bouchelle below. Bouchelle had started his true freshman year and was the presumed starter going into the season. Bouchelle got hurt during the first game of the season, so Ellinger took over the starting role. During his first start in a 56-0 win over San Jose State, Ellinger threw for 222 passing yards and a touchdown, as well as rushing for 48 yards. His second start came against number 4 USC in a 2006 Rose Bowl rematch. Texas took a late fourth quarter lead, but USC tied the game as time expired. Ellinger's 298 passing yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions were not enough for Texas. Ellinger had a costly fumble inside the five-yard line during the second overtime, and USC won the game 26-24. 
In a 40-34 to double overtime win over Kansas State, Ellinger threw for 380 passing yards, two touchdowns, and an interception while also having 107 rushing yards. Ellinger and the Longhorns pushed number 12 Oklahoma to the brink during the Red River rivalry, but fell short 29-24. Ellinger had 278 passing yards and one touchdown while also rushing for 106 yards and another touchdown. Ellinger struggled in a 13-10 loss to Oklahoma State and missed the next few games due to a concussion. He took over the starting quarterback role in a 28-14 win over West Virginia, but struggled again in a 27-23 loss to Texas Tech. During a 33-16 win over Missouri in the Texas Bowl, Ellinger threw for 112 passing yards and one touchdown. In nine games, Sam Ellinger threw for 1,915 passing yards, 11 touchdowns, and seven interceptions, while also rushing for 385 yards and two touchdowns. Trivia time. The answer to last week's trivia question was Colt McCoy. This week, Sam Ellinger led Texas in both passing yards and rushing yards during his true freshman season. Who was the last Texas Longhorn to lead the team in both passing and rushing yards during the same season? Was it A, Shane Bouchel, B, Colt McCoy, C, Vince Young, or D, Gerard Hurd? Sam Ellinger beat Shane Bouchel out for the starting quarterback job going into the sophomore season. Ellinger felt the pressure from the state of Texas the previous season, but was learning to handle it going into the sophomore year. Texas opened up the season with a loss to Maryland 34-29. Ellinger had 263 passing yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions in the game. His second interception turned out to be a costly one as it came late in the game as Ellinger was trying to lead a comeback. Ellinger learned from that game and set a Big 12 record for consecutive pass attempts without an interception throughout the season. People also said Ellinger seemed to grow up quickly after that game as he learned to block out the noise. In a four game stretch that included Tulsa, USC, TCU, and Kansas State, Ellinger led Texas to four wins while throwing for 922 passing yards and seven touchdowns as well as 123 rushing yards and three touchdowns on the ground. Going into the Red River rivalry against Oklahoma, Texas needed a win to keep their national title hopes alive. Ellinger threw for 314 passing yards and two touchdowns, as well as having 72 rushing yards and three touchdowns on the ground. The spotlight was not on Ellinger at the end of the game, but instead on freshman kicker Cameron Dicker, who kicked the game-winning field goal for Texas with nine seconds left and started the legend of Dicker the kicker. The final score of the game, 48-45, Texas. Ellinger left the Baylor game early due to an injury, but returned for the Oklahoma State game. In both the Oklahoma State game and West Virginia game, Ellinger had four passing touchdowns, but each resulted in heartbreaking losses for the Longhorns, 38-35 and 42-41 respectively. Ellinger threw for 312 passing yards and four touchdowns in a 41-34 win over Texas Tech. Texas finished the regular season on a three-game win streak, which set them up for a date against Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game. Ellinger's 349 passing yards, four touchdowns, and an interception would not be enough for Texas as the Longhorns lost the rematch 39-27. Texas played Georgia in the Sugar Bowl, where Ellinger threw for 169 passing yards as well as 64 rushing yards and three touchdowns. Texas beat the Bulldogs 28-21, and Ellinger told the fans, We're back! after the game. Texas finished the season 10-4 while Ellinger threw for 3,292 passing yards, 25 touchdowns, and 5 interceptions. He finished the season with 16 rushing touchdowns, which is the most rushing touchdowns by a Longhorns quarterback in school history. Ellinger's 41 total touchdowns was second most in school history, and he was awarded an honorable mention all Big 12. Going into Ellinger's junior season, expectations were extremely high for both him and the Longhorns. Texas came into the season as the 10th ranked team in the nation. Ellinger decided to delete Twitter before the season to block out the noise. Ellinger opened up the season throwing for 276 passing yards and 4 touchdowns in a 45-14 win over Louisiana Tech. Ellinger went toe-to-toe -to -toe against eventual Heisman winner Joe Burrow in a top 10 matchup against eventual national champions LSU. Going into the game, the debate all week was who was DBU? Apparently, the two quarterbacks did not like that as they both put on shows in the game. Ellinger threw for 401 passing yards and 4 touchdowns while also rushing for 60 yards and another touchdown on the ground. Unfortunately, that was not enough as Texas lost 45-38. Ellinger threw for 281 passing yards, 4 touchdowns and an interception while also rushing for 70 yards in a 36-30 win over Oklahoma State. Ellinger had 256 total yards, 4 total touchdowns and an interception in a 42-31 win over West Virginia. In a 34-27 loss to Oklahoma in the Red River rivalry, Ellinger threw for 210 passing yards and two rushing touchdowns. Ellinger threw for 399 passing yards, four touchdowns, and an interception, as well as 91 rushing yards in a 50-48 win over Kansas. Texas struggled down the stretch and finished the regular season 7-5. Texas played number 11 Utah in the Alamo Bowl. 
Everyone expected Utah to win the game as they came off a loss in the Pac-12 championship game against Oregon. Many believe that had Utah won the game, they would have been playing in the playoffs. Ellinger threw for 201 passing yards, 3 touchdowns and an interception along with 73 rushing yards and another touchdown on the ground as Texas rolled Utah 38-10. Ellinger finished the season throwing for 3,663 passing yards, 32 touchdowns and 10 interceptions while also rushing for 663 yards and 7 touchdowns on the ground. Ellinger's 4,300 26 total yards were good enough for second most in school history. After three seasons at Texas, Ellinger had a choice to make, either enter the draft or stay for his senior year. At this point in his career, Ellinger had played in 36 games, starting 33 of them, where he threw for 8,870 passing yards, 68 touchdowns, and 22 interceptions, while also rushing for 526 rushing yards and 25 touchdowns. Ellinger did what everyone expected him to do and decided to return to Texas for his senior year. Going into the 2020 season, if we have one, expectations will be high for Ellinger. He was named to the preseason Davey O'Brien Award watch list. Along with this, he was named third team preseason All-American as well as being named to the preseason All-Big 12 team. According to Westgate Sports, Ellinger has plus 1,400 odds at winning the Heisman behind Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, and Spencer Rattler. According to Sports Illustrated, Texas has the second highest odds to win the Big 12 at plus 175 and the 10th highest odds at winning the national championship at plus 4,000. With a good season, Ellinger could be a name to watch come the 2021 NFL Draft. Will the hometown quarterback finally bring Texas back to the promised land? We'll have to wait and see. If you like this video, check out my other videos in the Who Is series. Consider subscribing to the channel and remember to embrace the grind.